Bye. Take it up. In today's video, we're gonna talk to you about keeping a mini jersey. This collaboration with three other homesteading channels, the Big Family Homestead, the Texas Boys who are throwing the collaboration, and Kip Smith from Thousands of Roots is going to highlight different aspects of keeping a family cow. And now let's get into talking about that cow that really wants to be milked right now. Milking ladybug. She's an almost four year old mid miniature Jersey. A miniature cow is basically a cow that at three years of age is 42 inches or under. Now, ladybug's a mid sized miniature. She's 45 inches at three years of age. Some people are calling them heritage jerseys because the jerseys that came back from the Isle of Jersey originally were smaller than the ones we see today and produced a little less. The modern day jerseys have been bred for maximum production. And for us in the homestead, we didn't need maximum production. We don't need eight gallons a day. So she's just right for us. Another advantage for us why we chose a smaller size was she'll eat less. Because she's producing less, she'll eat less, which is better for us on our homestead because we don't have five acres where she can go and graze all day. We'll always be supplementing with a little bit of hay. I'm gonna let her out so she can start nursing on Ladybug so she can have her breakfast and she'll get me a good letdown from Ladybug. Go ahead. There are a few changes I've made to my milking routine. We've been doing this for three months now, since November. And I've invested in a teat cup for dipping. It goes right over the teat. This is a 1% iodine dairy cow dip. I'm gonna wipe it off. I use a different corner of the rag for each teat. I've also begun using gloves while I'm milking because I learned that we can give cows staph A mastitis infection, which is very, very hard to cure in a cow. I'm gonna use my strip cup now to get that those five first streams of milk from the, each teat. I can evaluate, get the bacteria out, see if there's any clumps in there, any stringiness. If there were, that would be a sign of mastitis. And we wouldn't wanna drink that milk. You can see from the filter, there's no clumps, there's no strings. She's a good, healthy cow. She's a nice size of cow for me. She's not too small that it's uncomfortable for me to reach down and milk her. There are some miniature cows where it's hard to even fit a bucket under them and you need to put them up on a milking stand. Another benefit to the smaller jersey is not, I don't have to hand milk out five or six gallons of milk every time. The calf probably takes a gallon when she eats. Just that one minute she'll take drink a gallon of milk. And I'll milk a gallon out, gallon and a half now. And that's enough hand milking for me, any more than that. I don't know how I would do it by hand. Longtime viewers of our channel know that I'm the one who likes to think about the business side of things, try to make some money. When you get a mini jersey and you calf share, you get much less milk. So maybe you're thinking to yourself, mini jersey, calf sharing, less milk, that means less money, right? A homestead family like ours, who is raising maybe one or two family cows, breeding them every year, having a heifer now every year, 
we're gonna have no need for more than maybe two cows at most. That means every year we're going to have a heifer for sale. Ladybug is a special cow. She's a mini Jersey. She gives A2A2 to A to milk. She's the perfect size for a homestead family cow. The mini Jerseys are more rare than a regular size Jersey. And because they're a rare animal that is in demand, they're more valuable. So although we won't make any money off of milk over these next few years, when we decide to sell a heifer like Luna, heifers like Luna on the market right now, mini jerseys from really good bloodlines, they can fetch three to six thousand dollars. That means we'll make way more money from the heifers that each year we produce here on our farm than we'd ever imagine making from a little bit of raw milk sales. On top of that all, we don't have to worry about selling raw milk, dealing with legal issues of selling raw milk, or any lawsuits from people who think that we got them sick. There's some people who have commented that it's a shame to see like the calf can't stay on the cow full time, how unnatural it all is. For us, what we found out the five, six years we've been doing this with cows, sheep, pigs, chickens, goats, is that agriculture is not natural. She could never survive in the wild on her own because these dairy animals have been bred to produce more milk than their calf can drink. So right away, if you're buying a dairy animal, you know you're going to have to milk her once she has a calf or you're risking the, the possibility of her getting mastitis. Agriculture is not something that happens in the wild. It's much more of a symbiotic relationship. Agriculture sometimes happens in the wild. There's little ants that farm aphids. Most of the time, though. Animals aren't farming other animals. We are. This is the third month I've been milking, and still my hands get sore. Especially milking those back teeth, doing that strip milking. Stretch my hand a little bit. My goal and my plan was to calf share. So Luna would be on her all day and we would separate them at night. And then I would let Luna out to, to eat during the day. That way we would be able to skip a milking occasionally for a weekend if we wanted to get, get away. It didn't work out that way because Luna got sick over, because she was overeating. And we have to monitor her a little closer now. Hopefully in the next month or so, we can reintroduce her to being with Ladybug all the, all the time. Which means we have to milk every day. That is the one thing about owning a dairy animal. You have to be home to milk. Post dip, wanna get that? We're gonna post dip because I don't have the calf on her after. There are bacteria, because the teat end is opened up right now from milking, bacteria could enter in there. If she goes and lays down in a pile of poop, she would get bacteria in there. So we're going to use the iodine dip. It's a shorty. I'll put links below to all the equipment that we use. Thanks, Ladybug, because that's not an expensive camera. Bit of an introvert, that one. My entire routine, from letting the calf out to milk, feed, water, taking the milk inside, getting in the freezer to chill right away, takes about 25 minutes every morning. So it doesn't take long. Cows drink a lot of water. So it's super convenient to have a frost-free hydrant in the pasture with them. That way I can water directly into the heated bucket. We haven't had an issue with the freezing at all this year. Please make sure we keep in mind though, even though she is a quote unquote miniature cow, she's still a large animal. You always have to pay attention to what you're doing around her. Ladybug's milk is especially valuable to us because it's A2A2 milk. It's a type of protein that's found in milk. The casein in the milk makes up 80% of the protein, and the beta casein makes up 30% of that. 
So there have been some studies that have shown that the A2 version is the type of casing that have been in cattle for thousands of years. And it's a better one for us. It's comparable to human breast milk or goat's milk. So the theory is that the A2 milk is easier for us, us to digest. We don't have anyone around us who is marketing the A2 milk, which is why for us it was a good idea to get a cow who is A2, A2 milk. Her calves will be valuable, and if we ever do decide to do a milk share, it will have value as well. It's always important when you're homesteading to try to find that niche market. Hopefully we found it here. Right now I'm filtering the milk through a paper filter. Into these half gallon mason jars with the wide mouth, which my filter, the stainless steel filter fits, fits on perfectly. I really love these half gallon size mason jars. They're more affordable than the gallon size. Now we'll put these in the freezer, the chest freezer, right away to chill quickly. And in two hours, I'll move them to the milk fridge. Remember to put a timer in there because if not, I forget and I get a gallon of milk frozen solid. I grew up in farm country. We always had chickens and goats, but I never grew up with a cow. So everything I've learned over the past year about keeping a family cow has been from the book, Keeping a Family Cow and the Family Cow Forum. I would definitely suggest, if you're interested in getting a family cow, join the forum. Then I wash everything with a bleach water mixture and dry thoroughly. Ladybug makes such sweet, delicious milk. Is that poop on your hand? I'm pretty sure that's cow poop on my hand. Oh yeah. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> so that's keeping a mini jersey as a family cow. It is a big lifestyle decision. Having a dairy animal definitely tethers you to your homestead. And it has to be something you really enjoy or else you may start to hate it. And a sacrifice your family is willing to make because it will affect traveling, and even just, you know, your regular daily schedule. If that doesn't bother you, don't bother with goats, get a cow. <laughs> we get a cream line on our half gallon of milk that's about two inches. You don't get that with goats. No. If you're gonna go through the work of having a family dairy operation, you might as well get the best product you can. And in our opinion, you can't beat Jersey milk. You can beat it, you'll get whipped cream. <laughs> because it's so good. And then butter. And then butter. Do that with a goat. <laughs> Go check out the other channels in this collaboration and there's going to be a prize. So subscribe to all their channels. Each day we're picking a random winner from the comments section. Leave a comment. This is our choice for today's winner and uh, be sure to tune into the last video in the series so you can find out who wins the grand prize which is a combination of a Home Study Pioneer membership some recipes from all these other channels. There's a whole lot of cool stuff. Check it out in the rest of the series. This year, having a dairy cow has been one of the best decisions we've made on our homestead. I enjoy having the routine and the chance to escape back to the barn for an hour or so a day. Thanks to the Texas Boys for having us on this collaboration. Be sure to check out the Texas Boys. We'll put a link there. Big Family Homestead, Kip. Boy, we love that product. Oh, it's supposed to go. Yeah. <sighs> Don't use that. It's so gross. No, I'm going to use that. No, it's so gross. I'm use Don't. It. That sounds I have to the use worst. It. <laughs>